Hi, people of the internet. If you are new to my channel and you want to get caught up real quick, up there, there's a link to the last video where I worked on my MR2. Everybody else, let me get off the casting couch here real quick. Try not to hit my head. Um, I got some fabricating that needs to happen today, specifically back here on the rear of the car. You guys noticed in the last video, I was talking about these roll center correctors that go on the top of the rear ball joints and how this one right here doesn't fit because this rear ball joint is slightly different. So I need to get this fabricated, machined. Just in case you missed the last video on this, the reason why I have two different ball joints in the rear is because I ordered them from website X and there were supposed to be two Toyota OE rear ball joints. However, one is Toyota and the other one says made in Japan, 3.5. They both fit, they're both exactly the same. It's just the little cap is machined slightly different that serves no purpose. It's gonna be covered up anyway. So I'm not gonna order another one just cause of that. I forgot to get a water. Ooh, almost hit the camera on the ceiling. I just ate a couple of oranges, so I'm feeling full of energy. Go. Ooh. The airbag on this car is so tiny. It's crazy. Is it weird that I enjoy reviewing basic ass cars? Like, I don't really desire to review exotics or any of that crap. Just, I like normal people cars. Especially when you find out they're good. Like this one. If only it had a stick. If only. I feel like this is gonna be a major case of deja vu for some of you, but it's time to get some fabricating done. I, ouch, I hurt. The roll center plate and this guy. So, met Charlie's, and he's gonna machine some stuff, because that's what he does, because he's a fabric cobbler. That's gonna spin. Mm -hmm. And then this cutter is gonna cut the inside of it. How will that spin if it's not balanced? Is it gonna be wobbly, because it's not no. a balanced assembly? No, that'll be fine. Oh, really? Yeah. Basically what has to happen is, see how there's, two, there's three ridges? It goes one, two, three. Well, this top ridge right here is much fatter than the OE uh, Toyota part. So this just needs to be some depth added right here for this. Oh, that little gauge is telling you where it's like high or low. Yeah, so right now th this side's the low side. Oh. And that side's the high side. But because I'm measuring the inside diameter, it's making me have to think about it. That's pretty close. Within a thou and a half. If I didn't have these roll center adjusters on here, there would be no reason for him to have to machine a little bit out of my block. The only reason why he's doing that is because I'm using these roll center correctors. Like a glove. Yay! Look at that. Well, there you go. It's milled out on the inside. Focus, focus, <laughs> focus. But yeah, it's good to go. It's nice and warm. People underestimate how handy a Charlie is. Hey, you know? Hi, I'm back on the casting couch. I gotta stop calling this a casting couch. It's a tire rack of two pieces of particle board in a back seat from an Audi TT. It's comfy though. Back to work. I'm gonna tear into this rear suspension and uh, make some progress. Also, I ordered a set of front tie rods that have up to 15 millimeters of adjustability for bump steer. So now I'll have my roll center and bump steer correction kit on this car. With the exception of the rear, I still have to figure out how I'm gonna adjust my bump steer back here. I have the roll center plates, but bump steer is still gonna be a little bit off. So it looks like what I have to do is make a plate that will lower the rear tie rod where it mounts to the spindle and that will correct the geometry back here. Mark these guys. Use some nail polish to mark those bolts again. Even though I gotta get alignment anyway, but whatever. Balls. Hi 
I gotta remove the side blade panel so I can get to the top of the strut. Forgot about that. I'm gonna put this in a safe place because I don't wanna accidentally sit on it or bend it. So I put it on a seat because I don't wanna sit on it, it's smart. I discovered there's a company that actually makes a kit to relocate the radiator cap on this car and it deletes this hose down here and all this other garbage and it's just a nice billet aluminum piece that goes right here and then your cap was located right there. Part of me wants to do that but I don't know, maybe I should just wait and build a Gen 3 3S GTE on the side for this thing to drop in and then sell this engine or something, I don't know. Why are you not dropping? That sucks. The shaft of the shock is turning. How the hell am I gonna hold that still? Okay. There we go. Oh. Uh. Ah. Take that out too. Oh no, no, no. This is a heavy sausage. I don't know why I called it a sausage. There you go. Now that that's done, it's time to reassemble the rear suspension. I got everything cleaned up, cleaned up the strut bodies. I painted these top hats the other night and just cleaned up the rest of the parts. So I need to pull out these inserts and put my new Coney yellows in there. And then I'm gonna change out the bump stops and put fresh boots on there, as well as these rear end links. Hopefully this will be the last step. I'll have all the suspension bolted back together and the car can get settled down the ground. I was gonna try to finish this all in today's video, that was the goal, but I'm gonna be 100% honest, I felt like absolute crap today and yesterday. So I'm gonna try my best. If I can get this thing on all four tires on the ground, I'm gonna consider that a win. I mean, the alignment won't be done, but I'll consider that a win. I guess I should probably take these guys off too. These are trayish now. New insert goes in there, just like that. Okay. In case you're wondering, the manufacturer instructions say to put a little bit of ethylene glycol inside here to act as a lubricant and to aid in heat dissipation and keep it from freezing, all kinds of other stuff. I did do that, so. There's a date on the side of the strut. It says October 26th, 1990. That means my car was assembled somewhere around October 26th, 1990. That's, that's interesting. I don't know why I keep getting closer to the camera like I'm far away. This is really strange. Okay, passenger side, passenger side. There you go. Boot. Oh, not these again. This thing's a huge pain in the ass. This is a boot. This is a bump stop. I did not show this in the front when I did the front suspension of the car because this is kind of irritating and stupid and I didn't think people would care. But if you're watching this as some form of a tutorial on doing suspension on an MR2 or similar and you buy a new one of these from KYB with this boot, this is intended right here, this ring to lock into this notch right here. Well, good luck with that because it's tight and not in a good way. Yeah, buddy, got that in there. Time to get this guy mounted up. That sounded inappropriate. This, fresh new hardware from Toyota, overnighted from not Japan. Look at that, nice. Okay, that's in place. More new hardware from Toyota, not overnighted from Japan. This little tab right here catches the bottom of this frame and the new bolt goes through the brace right here, and then this rod right here. Oh, no, 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 you go in there. This is a real treat to try to line up. I gotta get the bolt through this brace right here, through here, and then thread into the subframe. All right, got that guy on there. Kinda, sorta. 
Why have I not taken this off yet? This needs to go in the trash. It's starting to look like rear suspension again. Now, this guy right here, the roll center corrector that uh, Charlie milled out for me, is now gonna go back here. Problem I realized though with in the front is these roll center correction plates right here. The bolt looks like it's long enough, but once you have the ball joint on here and then it has to thread into the spindle, this bolt that came with the kit is actually not long enough, so I just gotta go grab some longer bolts. The ones in the rear are good. This box right here, just finally got this in the mail. These are my bump steer correction front tie rod ends. The only company I could find that still makes these for the MR2 was Megan Racing. It offers five to 15 mil adjustability. So I bought these, it's not sponsored. There's a spacer right here and a spacer right here. There's five, 10, and if you put these two spacers on the side that you need, it'll give you up to 15 millimeters of adjustability. So that way I can correct this geometry on the tie rod end and have it brought down to the same angle as my lower control arm. And just like that, they are on the car. I just snapped my fingers in my left hand again. That's what's up. These adjustable front tie rod ends utilize a heim joint right here. And then I have both the 10 and the five mil spacers, which are lowering the overall angle of my tie rod end to match the same rake as the lower control arm. There is a little bit of deviation in the angle and that's actually how it was from the factory too. So once it's on level ground, I should be able to do the final adjustments and see if that needs to be milled down at all or change the spacers on this guy and then the geometry should be correct. This rear tie rod does not have any bump steer correction. So I need to get a tab fabricated that will actually lower this rear rod downward to match the rake of the rear lower control arm. Cause you can see I got the spacer now between the ball joint and the spindle, which is gonna correct the geometry back here for the car being lowered. So just gotta address that and I gotta take some measurements to be able to see how much it needs to be lowered. Done. All four wheels are back on the car and I'm gonna put it on the ground now. Like I said, I was going to. Here goes. That worked well. That camber actually came in a ton when I settled it down. That's surprising. Okay. Ta-da! Car is back on all four wheels. I'm not gonna drive it though. The next video, I'll see how this bump steer roll center correction worked and how all the new suspension parts, since I replaced literally every single part of the suspension and steering system on this car other than the steering rack. Yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.